Well, Jamie Roberts, the last time we met up, it was before the World Cup, and I said to you, when it's all over and you come home, and you said, well, it'll be a new home, um, how are you going to feel? And here we are now, click of a finger, I'm on the eve of the Six Nations. Doesn't time fly when you're enjoying yourself? So how are you, and how are you feeling? Uh, feeling very well. Um, certainly the World Cup was an incredible experience. Um, it's gone ridiculously quick. And it feels like a whole season really, and you come back into what is another full season. Um, it's, you know, it's a very, very, very long season. I think we're only halfway through it um, domestically and, and in the European competition as well. So uh, there's a lot of rugby to be played. Well, the World Cup's gone in, in one sense, but never to be forgotten. Um, you had you had aspirations before you went to the World Cup, and um, well, it, it, it could have gone better, but it could have gone a lot worse. Yeah, certainly. I think uh, as players, as a country, um, as supporters, we look back with massively fond memories. But still, you know, what could have been? It's one of those uh, you lose a World Cup semi-final by a point. Um, and it's always going to be, you know, what could have been, and uh, I think that's, you know, the hardest thing to take. But that's professional sports, you know. But people are well aware of that, and certainly there's no more, no more people more aware more aware of that than the players. It's, uh, you know, very cruel, very cruel way to lose a, a World Cup semi-final, and uh, you know, unfortunately we couldn't win that third, fourth place playoff either, um, and also lost to Australia at home as well. So. You know, the last couple obviously lost the last three games of Wales now, so looking to put things right moving forward you know, into the Six Nations. That's interesting because you speak to the English boys and obviously the, the hurt of the World Cup that they're, they're going to try and use and utilise. You speak to the Irish boys and there's there's a bit of hurt there as well because you, know, you guys dumped them out in the quarter-final. What's the sort of the mood of you? Because you know, it was, it was deemed a successful World Cup. You got to the semi-finals. It was an amazing journey. But, but as you say, there's also the... ah. Oh, so near, we're so near to World Cup final. So, sort of mixed emotions, which you're going to use to go into the Six Nations. Yeah, certainly mixed emotions. It was a very, I suppose, bittersweet tournament. Um, but yeah, I think all the players are still hurting from from not making a World Cup final. Um, you look at France; they lost the World Cup final by a point. Um, and Could have, guys, should have won it. Exactly, and those guys, I'm pretty sure those guys are, are hurting more than anyone. Um, but you know, it's, it's important we use that motivation um, to, you know, to really drive us on to bigger and better things. You know, I suppose raising the bar in everything we do. Um, and I suppose if you stop raising the bar, you get caught out in this game. And certainly in international rugby, you need to continually raise the bar. And, and that starts, you know, when the squad is named next week, um, and we go out to Poland. The weird thing is, normally World Cups are cyclical, and after sort of four years, it's out with the old, in with the new. But you guys went to the World Cup as predominantly. A, a pretty young team, so as I say, we'll have to wait and see what happens with selection. But you know, you'd expect a lot of those young guys to be involved. So I mean, potentially uh, for the future and for the present as well. I mean, there's a lot to look forward to, isn't there? I mean, you, I mean, you're almost one of the old guard now, and you're what, 24? Tender age of 25. Yeah, yeah I think you're uh, a bit of a bit of an old pro, you now compared to some of them. Yeah, yeah. But I, the point is that you could all, as a unit, stick together. God willing, for a number of years. Yeah, certainly, and I think, um, I think just that mix of, of youth and experience is crucial. You know, you look at the World Cup, albeit a, a lot of young players. You, you've got guys, Shane Williams, Stephen Jones. These guys have been around for a very long time. You know, a decade or more of international rugby, and you know it's very important you have that experience there as well. And, you know, as I said, fingers crossed for selection. Hopefully, you know, I can I can take more responsibility. Come this year's tournament and I move forward. You know, there's a lot of lot of players taking a lot of responsibility. You know, whether they're older or younger. You know, you look at your guys like your Falatos, Warptons, Lydiards, these sort of players. They get through a hell of a lot of work on the pitch. And um, George North, George North as well. Mm. You know, these guys are 23, 22 years old, and it's, it's pretty scary. But as you said, at the same time, massively exciting. And you know, you look at the next four year cycle towards the World Cup, you'd be, you'd be a daft man to bet against those boys not being there in four years' time. Well, I mean, who knows what's going to happen, but but you, you're right. I mean, if it all goes to plan, all those guys you've just mentioned, and yourself, I mean, how many caps have you won now, Jamie? Uh, 39. 39. Well, I don't want to tempt Providence, but, you know, over the course of four years, all of you are going to be mid to late 20s, and it's the ideal scenario 50, 60, goodness knows how many caps on your belt. If you keep fit and you keep your form, 
could be very good. I think, uh, yeah, I th a couple of people have mentioned to me um, during the World Cup, and certainly after it, you know, in four years' time, you'll be in great shape. You'll have players who are at the height of their careers at 26, 27, and. Uh, a load of caps? A load of caps. I completely disagree with it, I mm. think. Oh, you would, wouldn't you? I, Go on. I completely disagree with it. What's purely, your point? Purely because of the fact, you know, you're there at a World Cup. Mm. The run we had to the finals, you know, we had Ireland, then we had France. Uh, we didn't face the Southern Hemisphere team, um, and our opportunity was there and then. I yeah. suppose you had to take it there and then. There and then. You see the moment. Of, yeah, irregardless of whether, I suppose, a lot of your players are here only five to ten caps, maybe, you know, not just yeah. 50, 60 cap players. Um, and you need to seize the moment. And who knows, in four years' time, there might be a player, you know, a score of players full of peak of their career, 26, 27 yeah. year olds. 50, 60 caps under their belts, but I suppose that the environment might be different. There might be a couple of players out with injury. It might be a completely different World Cup. For the neutral, I would say that there are one of maybe four teams that could win the Six Nations, and the other two could do serious damage. That that's my view. Uh, if that's correct, you never know. It might be. That makes it a very exciting tournament. I, I personally, I think it's the most closely fought tournament um, in the last four or five years. I think uh, a better man would find it very hard to, to pick a winner um, before the tournament started. Obviously, the opening weekend will tell us quite a lot about where the teams are. But um, you look at you look at obviously Italy's and Scotland, strong teams who they're going to beat someone, aren't they? Exactly. They're gonna, you know they're going to cause cause teams a huge amount of problems. And as you said, the other four. It's very tough to pick a winner. You know, obviously England will be frustrated with their World Cup campaign and have gone for a lot of youth in their squad, which is you know very encouraging and uh, they're going to be a very tough team, certainly for us to beat down at Twickenham. Obviously, we have to go to Dublin as well. Ireland will be on a revenge mission um, for sure, and we, we you know we welcome France to the Random Stadium in what is obviously a rematch of that, of that World Cup semi. Now, before we go, what I like about you, Jamie, is that uh, you, you you embrace life. Life is full for you. We're talking about your trip to Creamfields in, in the summer yeah. and obviously your medical studi studies and uh, and your dreams of moving into your, your, your house. Um, so since the World Cup, uh, over the last few weeks, uh, tell us what else has been happening. All of that, I guess. Well, not, not trips to Creamfields, but moving into your, back to your house. Victorian Terrace, isn't it? Yes, you telling me? Yeah, I had the house renovated, so that's uh, up and running. Very good. Um, you in by yourself? In by myself, yeah. which is nice. Got my own space, which is... Uh, Happy, just need to find a lady now. Okay, uh, uh, well, we seem to have turned into a dating site suddenly. <laughs> um, and yeah, just working, you know, obviously a bit of a knee injury at the moment, so working yeah. hard to rehab that and uh, back back on the bandwagon really with the university. Um, You've been at the hospital, I take really, it? Yeah, I've been at the hospital quite a bit, um, just putting in the hours there and basically trying to refresh what I, I've forgotten everything during the World Cup, I think, had about probably five or six months of doing nothing. Uh, medical wise, so I've forgotten everything I know. That's so, going to be encouraging if I have to have to be treated by you, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm trying to refresh. Okay. Fingers crossed, in a year's time, I'll uh, pass my final. So that's the, uh, that's the next goal for me. All right, Jamie, well, listen, best of luck with the Six Nations. Keep up the good work, and we'll catch up with you soon. Thank you very much.